Well, believe it or not, I think we have arrived at the last video in what has become one of the longest demos ever. In this video, we're going to look at a few different techniques for finishing your sculpture, which includes a little bit of painting before curing, some things you can do after curing, and adding uh, some mixed media, so some non-polymer elements. So I'll start by just covering uh, all the materials that I'm going to use in the in the video right off the start. Uh, so I've got some some brushes and a couple tools. I don't anticipate doing any sculpting, but I like to have one handy just in case you see a flaw and you want to fix it before you paint it. Um, you can use really cheap brushes for this. Uh, I do prefer uh, on a small piece to have a you know a fairly small uh, round. Uh, brush and I also like to have something that's a bit a bit flatter and a, a, a bit heavier just for mixing uh, mixing the paint in terms of paint I'm going to be using opaque watercolor that comes in these little pucks okay uh, opaque watercolor uh, very similar um, to what we call gouache so gouache is watercolor paint that has a uh, an opaque um, uh, pigment in it as as well, so it's not uh, it's not as translucent as as regular watercolor. I like to use the ones in the little in the little cakes. Um, I think water based ink will work as well. I've only ever used uh, watercolor or say the opaque watercolor, and that's what I'll be using today. I've also got some uh, some mica powders. I'm not sure if it's actual um, mica made by Perlex. So there's one here. Uh, that's gold, and I've got a uh, uh, black. I've got some baby wipes, uh, just some water, uh, some paper towels, and then the isopropyl alcohol again, which we will mix with the paint because we know the uh, uh, alcohol acts as a bit of a solvent on the polymer clay. So if we mix that with our paint, we'll actually get it to embed into the surface a little bit rather than just sitting on on top of the. Uh, sculpture. I might show a little bit of acrylic paint as well and now through the magic of advanced video editing we also have a small um, tube of acrylic paint. Uh, I only ever use acrylic paint after uh, after it's cured not um, not before and then I have just a few little items here uh, pieces of metal um, a small uh, ceramic bead um, some little pieces of brass that came off a uh, clock or or something like that, uh, and a piece of string, and those are some of the mixed media elements that we will add to the sculpture. Adding mixed media to polymer is incredibly easy because the polymer clay does not shrink or expand uh, to any significant degree during curing. Uh, it, it makes it easy to, to just simply stick stuff in. So this so this is a piece I did several years ago on a found piece of ceramic. You can see it back there. Um, just a cheap ceramic cast of the, the Blue Boy. Bought it at Value Village or Salvation Army Thrift Store, something like that. Uh, all of this is polymer, but this is a, a little copper um, uh, rivet that was put on. There's a tiny little uh, steel screw from a watch here and there's a gear here there's an actual piece of glass on on the one lens and because the polymer is cured at a low temperature it doesn't it doesn't affect the uh, doesn't affect the, the ceramic so you can add string or fabric paper cardboard um, anything that's made out of metal glass or ceramic so um, it does really open up to, uh, to, to quite a few possibilities for adding uh, little details and some some different materials and it's really just a matter of embedding those items directly into uh, the polymer so if I had this piece of, of string and I'm just going to use our our weird uh, demo piece today so I can do a bunch of different techniques on this on the same piece I'm just going to I'm going to uh, put fair amount of tension on it so it actually sinks into the polymer. Now if you do have a piece of mixed media and it seem and it pops out 
after the curing, you can just epoxy it back in or just super glue it back in once it's, uh, once it's cured. So you can wrap, um, you can wrap something up uh, with, with different, uh, with, with different materials. So there's a bizarre little um, headband. Uh, things like little screws and other other fixtures, if they're if they're carefully placed, you do have to you do have to think um, you have to think in terms of of design. So we'll give him a, a piercing here. And there's a really not um, there's not any more more to it than than that. Uh, we'll give him a, a major piercing in his chin. So uh, what you do have to be aware is if you're if you're you know mashing things in, then sometimes you do have to re-sculpt the 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 texture around the piece or around the the element that you stuck in. And again, if that if those happen to fall out during curing, um, a perfectly sized uh, hole will be in its place, so you can just, just glue it back in. Um, little jewelry findings, so, uh, you know, little pins and, and things that you would buy for uh, making jewelry, including the, the glass or ceramic beads, can also work uh, really well. And Maybe could have covered this when we were talking about eyes, but um, glass or ceramic beads work great for eyes. This one has a little hole in it, so I'm just going to take this little uh, little pin, and I'll just. I do want to leave areas open for for painting. I'll just stick that there, and that. Um, that could be a fairly convincing eye. They're they're perfectly um, they're perfectly round, so that's um, that's one advantage. Uh, again, anything that's metal, or fabric, or paper, glass or ceramic, will um, you can you can work that right into the clay. And like I showed you on that um, that blue boy sculpture, you can also apply polymer over top of glass or ceramic. Again. The, the reason we can get away with that is the polymer is cured at a low temperature, 275, and uh, very, very little expansion or um, contraction with the polymer as it cures, which allows us to add mixed media with, uh, with reckless abandon. So I'll spend a minute showing you how I set up my palette because most of this will be off camera when we're doing the actual painting. So however you have it set up in different containers or on a margarine lid, but I like to have a, uh, a bit of water and then the isopropyl alcohol. And I try to remember which is which because they look the same. And so I will keep my bottle of alcohol over here on the right and my water off to the left out of knocking over distance, hopefully. And I always start with, with water if you're using this, um, these, these kind of um, pucks. And, you, and you'll be changing your water quite a bit. Um, I never get too fussy and I let my water get pretty filthy. Okay, that is, that's a lot of paint right there. We can do a lot of, uh, we can do a lot of work with that. So I wanna get it quite thin with the water. If you're worried about contaminating your brushes, you can have some clean water. And then I'm going to pick up uh, quite a bit of alcohol. And you can see it um, doesn't want to mix uh, immediately. But as you start to blend it in, you get a very, very thin wash. And again, I like to have a, um, a test piece. So this is the same color polymer that we're, we're using. 
And you can see I'm just barely staining it. Um, that's actually quite that's actually quite heavy. That will probably go a little bit darker when it's cured uh, th than I want it to. So I said that was quite a bit of paint, um, probably way more than I needed. So we can we can thin it down. Kind of equal parts water and and alcohol, roughly. Um, you just want to make sure there's enough alcohol in there to um, to act as a bit of a solvent. So if I just pick some more of that up. Yeah, probably almost imperceptible to to the camera, which means we're we're probably in a uh, in a good spot. So that's how I set up my palette. So uh, I'll show you a couple of the key spots that I like to uh, uh, to attack with the with the paint. So when I'm painting at this stage, a few areas I like to key in on are uh, the lips and the eye sockets, um, no nose and ears. So some of the the major features, and I like to think of it as as staining the sculpture rather than rather than thinking of, of painting where you're where you're covering the surface you're really just trying to add a bit of a, a stain to it and I haven't hesitated to mix the the colors a little bit strong so they show up on on the video um, might be might be a little darker than I want after we after we cure it the clay itself does darken a bit, but you're really just trying to shift the color just slightly. Uh, res resist the urge to uh, to go really uh, to go really dark and to uh, to go too um, opaque. And if you have too much color, let's see, if you get too much color pooled up in a spot, so like that. You can just take some alcohol on your brush. Just kind of, kind of blend it out. And you can touch your finger on it just to, again, interrupt that, that application and that surface a bit so it doesn't look too even. But already we're getting, uh, we're just shifting those, um, the lips just a little bit, uh, a little bit uh, more red. And then in these eye sockets, while well, we have our, our red pigment on the brush, can paint very carefully. And again, with these meandering lines, some veins, I like to I like to push them back quite a bit. You don't need a, a tiny single hair brush. You just need to um, be fairly steady with your hands. And remember the veins aren't really swooping lines. And then, and then push them, push them back. around blemishes we would often see things maybe a bit red or or irritated pulling it out with some more alcohol i've also mixed up some uh, some blue and same thing with A light touch those veins and blood vessels that are carrying deoxygenated blood and that's why they're blue if I remember high school biology over and over
over, I'm gonna say it. Subtlety is, is better than being uh, really over the top uh, with these details. I know on the camera it's probably uh, almost, you know, almost impossible to see. But if you look at, if you look at the human face and features, you know, those, those veins and, and blood vessels under the surface, and we, you know, the, we see them under the surface. We don't, we don't want them to look like they're, they're painted on, on top. Around the chin where there would be, um, on a male figure, where there'd be a kind of five o'clock shadow that dark blue can be kind of effective. Another thing I like to use is just like a, um, a kind of a brown four, just for, for spots. But we want the, we want the polymer itself to be carrying most of the, uh, mo most of the, the color, the uh, the, the flocking that we put in. We want that to be our, our flesh color and then this bit of paint just to accentuate. The last pre-curing approach I want to show you is with those Perlex mica powders and you really have to be careful because man these can get messy. So I'm just digging a little bit out and putting it in the uh, in the lid and with a very soft brush you can see how messy it is I'm just kind of pounding it in here. Now this, this is not, um, I don't recommend this if you're, you're trying to make something uh, relatively realistic. But if, you're, if your character, you know, has a little more of a, oh, I don't know, like a graphic quality to it, um, this, is, this turns it, it starts to look more like a drawing. So we're just coating it in that black powder, jamming it into the, um, into the, the detail areas that are cut in. And then with a, uh, a baby wipe, just gently brushing most of the, most of the powder off. Again, it's not um, it's not a subtle effect. But there might be a case where this makes sense for uh, for whatever character um, uh, you're working on. So it does stain the kind of stains the overall. Uh, appearance it does flatten out really fine texture because I'm rubbing on it with a uh, a baby wipe um, but it can give you some interesting give you some interesting looks like most things I've got this huge collection of all these different colors of, of powder and rarely use any of them um, mostly use uh, mostly use the the black but just for fun, because we're all here, let's just look at what some of this gold powder would look like. And we'll just kind of, we'll kind of apply it like makeup. With a tiny brush, you could control it more if you wanted to. So um, again, if you if you're careful about how much um, uh, you use it, and, and that will with the heat that this powder will kind of just bake right into the um, bake right into the polymer. It won't be um, a, as dusty. So yeah, somebody is ready to go to the disco. It looks like. So I'm, I'm going to put this uh, in the oven. I'm going to cook it at, at 275. Um, I might take a quick shot once it's in the oven. Uh, you have to be really careful. So again, if you're, if you're doing this in your home oven, um, 
just build a uh, an aluminum foil tent around around the whole thing. You can put the you can put the um, uh, base in if you want, or you can lay it down on a bed of um, like crumpled up paper towels or or toilet paper. Uh, just so it's supported and so you have to you have to be careful that when you lay it down you're not going to squish anything um, because as it's curing it becomes really soft for a few minutes so if there's something sticking out in space like ears you'll want to prop it up with a uh, a, a little bit of uh, crumpled toilet paper or uh, a paper towel okay so I've got our person entombed here in the in the oven with a little bit of uh, support underneath. Um, I've got my thermometer that shows it's just under uh, 275. It'll probably climb back up since I just had the door open. And again, the reason it's important to have that little thermometer is the oven setting has to be at 300 in order for the real temperature to be at uh, 275. This is a fun video, hey? see my fat head reflected anyway so give your give your piece a little bit of support so it doesn't um, so it keeps its keeps its shape and under this harsh light you can see already how um, just that little bit of heat how dark those um, the, those those lips are going so that you know that orange was probably um, a little bit too strong even though it was barely showing up um, I'd said I had mixed it a bit strong to show up on the video and uh, and we can see that it's probably a little bit uh, a little bit heavy but we'll let that cure and we'll check back in pretty ugly results as uh, demos are sometimes uh, known to produce uh, happy with the uh, where the the blue uh, was applied um, the the black mica powder gave me the uh, effect that I was anticipating, and the uh, the gold powder. Again, if you use it sparingly and um, intentionally, that could maybe could maybe be okay. Um, the the red turned out way too orange for what I was uh, for what I was hoping for. So I've just mixed up a tiny bit of of red. Um, water-based paint uh, with some alcohol and so even though I typically prefer to do this before I think I can probably push this orange uh, back towards the red so uh, I, I think I said I you know I'm worried about it showing up on film so I mixed it a little bit strong and this is what I get so uh, it I really encourage you to um, experiment on a on a couple pieces and take some notes with how thick you're um, mixing your your paint okay and that that will that will dry and that um, that could look okay it's still pretty um, uh, pretty orange so let me quickly show you what we can do adding straight acrylic paint with no um, no thinner in it this gives a again a different effect um, typically wouldn't use all of these at the same time, but depending on what you're um, wanting to do, um, this might work for you. So I'm using a um, kind of a goldy uh, brown. You can use black if you want. Um, black is always so black, so harsh. So just leave that for just a minute and again this is on cured polymer and then with a sponge or just damp paper towel and start removing some of that and again it, it will it stains the overall surface but if you're careful it will leave uh, it'll leave some pigment in the in the groove so if that's um, if that's something you want to explore um, I, I typically like to have whatever color I'm doing in the polymer, right? I'm fairly happy with the flesh color and then um, some staining. Um, I would try to 
I would try to make it less orange um, on, on the piece that I'll be uh, finishing. But depending on what color you choose, um, you could get something interesting there. Uh, last thing, pledge uh, floor finish for tile and vinyl floors. I'm not sure how this is a few years old and it, it is starting to look a little bit yellow. Um, but it gives, it's essentially liquid acrylic something. And for those areas that you want glossy, it's a good, uh, um, it's a good solution. So, you know, around, around the mouth um, and cer certainly in the eyes. Okay, it'll just give it a, when it dries, it'll just give it a, a, a bit of a sheen. Rather than ending on that horrifying demo piece, uh, this is where we've, this is where we've ended up. So just keep in mind, work your major forms first, and then slowly start to refine. Lots of time for detail at the end. Hope you found this somewhat enjoyable, somewhat interesting, somewhat informative. Hope you've maybe learned something. Uh, I've learned uh, quite a bit. I always do every time I uh, make a piece. So keep making cool stuff. And we'll see you soon.